Hi everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to this video. So in this video, we're gonna learn about Unity by building a fully working game in a very short time. I hope you're really excited. So let's get started. So here I have opened up a new 3D empty Unity project. You can go ahead and open that. And then I have changed the layout from default to two by three. So if you are in default layout, you can simply change it to two by three layout, then you will be good to go. Now we will need a few things for this game. First of all, we need a we need a 3D ball model. You can download it from anywhere. Also, we need a texture for the ground that you can also download from anywhere. Now, you can simply go ahead and go to Google and uh, write seamless grass texture and download any of the seamless grass textures. And for the ball, I have gone to this Unity Asset Store and from there, I have picked up this free soccer ball. You can go ahead and use any other ball that you want to. Whenever you are ready, simply click on Open in Unity and then it will be opened here from the package manager simply click on import and import and this way you will be able to import this soccer ball in your project so as you can see now we have it right here inside the soccer ball folder so from here i'm going to go to this prefabs folder here we have the soccer ball simply go ahead and drag and drop it right here on the scene and as you can see here we have our soccer ball we can simply zoom in by rotating our mouse wheel and this is where our soccer ball is we can also press the F key to focus on it and then zoom out like this. All right. So here we have our soccer ball. Now, if you want, you can use it simply like this or you can change its materials. So I'm going to go ahead and change its materials a little bit. This is optional just because I want it. So as you can see, when you select the soccer ball here, you have the materials list. From this, I'm going to select this black ball material and simply go ahead and change its albedo to a something different color, something like red or uh, something like that because I prefer this color. So let's keep it like this. So once you have done that, now we need to create the ground where the ball can rest. But before that, let's select our soccer ball. And as you can see here, we have a sphere collider attached already. That means the ball can collide with other objects. Now we also need to add a rigid body component to the ball. So I'm going to go to add component physics, and then I'm going to click a click on this rigid body. So now the ball can interact with physics objects in the scene. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move the ball a little bit upwards and let's create our new ground. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a 3D object cube and this cube is going to be our ground. So let's move it down a little bit. So here we have our cube. Now I'm going to go ahead and make its X scale to let's say uh, 10 and not 10 let's say 5 and the z scale to let's say 20 okay so this is how this cube is going to be now as you can see this blue line is our z axis or our forward axis so you should always rotate your camera so that your z axis is at the front direction so to rotate your camera or rotate your view what you can do is press the alt key on your keyboard pressing the alt key you can press the left mouse button and then you can rotate the view like this okay so press alt key left mouse button and rotate it like this. So now as you can see, we can see the front axis and looks like our player is ready to roll. So let's go ahead and uh, rename this one to ground. So ground. Now let's go ahead and, and add a texture to our ground. So as you can see, I have already downloaded a grass texture, not here. I have already downloaded a grass texture that you can simply drag and drop here to create a new material or you can do what you can do is you can go to your materials folder right click and create a new material and name it grass and then inside that albedo of that grass simply drag and drop the texture and that way as well you can create a new material and then you can drag the grass texture right here okay so now as you can see it looks pretty odd so to fix this what we can do is we can select our ground go to the grass material and from the texture tiling let's set the x to 4 and y to 4 as well so now as you can see it looks pretty good because it has tiled <laughs> greatly and now it looks pretty good you can also go ahead and change few other properties to make it look a little bit better you can change the smoothness like this you can make it lower to make it look better you can also change the metallic property but i think i'm gonna keep it like this Okay, so now that we have our ground and ball ready, let's move the ball a little bit upwards. And now when I press play, you will see the ball will fall down. 
So now as you can see, whenever we press play, the ball falls down. All right, so now that we have our ball and ground ready, it's time to make our ball move and create the player controller. So inside our assets, let's create a new folder called scripts create a new folder called scripts and inside the scripts folder I'm gonna right click create a new C sharp script and I'm gonna name this one player controller and then I'm gonna select my soccer ball and drag and drop the player controller right over it alright so now we have the player controller attached let's double click to open it in Visual Studio first of all let's go ahead and create the few variables that we have here that we need here so first of all we need a speed by which we our ball can move for that we're gonna create a public float move speed variable then we will of course need to take the inputs and for that we're gonna create two new variables float x input and of course we need a semicolon here and float y input and I'm gonna make this x small alright so this will take the input from the left and right arrow keys and also from the up and down arrow keys so that we can move our ball then we will need an access to the rigid body component that we have attached to our ball so for that we're gonna create a new variable rigid body RB so these are the variables that we need for right now now inside the start we're gonna say RB equals get component rigid body so now we will have access to the rigid body that we have attached to our game object inside this RB variable so whatever we want to do we want to add force we want to make it jump whatever we want to do we can do it just by using this RB variable alright so now inside the update we're gonna take our inputs so for X input we're gonna say X input equals input dot get access horizontal so this horizontal axis automatically will give us input from the left and right arrow keys or from the A and D arrow keys on our keyboard. And for the Y input, we're going to say equals input dot get axis vertical. So this vertical will give us input from the up and down arrow keys. So whether we are pressing the up key or whether we are pressing the down arrow key and depending on that it will give us the value and using that value we can move we can make our player move left and right up and down or front and back so now that we have the input what we can do is we can move move our player using physics inside the fixed update function so we're gonna write void fixed update and inside the fixed update function we're gonna say rv dot add force so we're gonna add force to our ball and by doing that we can actually move our ball now First of all, we're going to make our ball move left and right. And for that, we're going to give a value to the x-axis. So for the x-axis, we're going to say x input multiplied by move speed. Now for the y-axis, we're going to give the value 0. Because we don't want to make our ball move up and down. We only want to make our ball move left and right and front and back. So that's why no value to y. And for the z as well, we're going to write y input multiplied by move speed okay so just by doing that we can make our ball move alright now let's do one more thing whenever the ball falls down from the ground let's make it reset let's reset the level and start the level again so that we can restart the game for that here we're gonna say if transform dot position dot y is less than equals to minus 5f that means whenever the ball falls down and goes below 5 we're gonna reset the level and how can we reset the level to reset the level we need to write scene scene manager dot load scene and here we can write 0 that means the scene at 0th index because this is our first level that's why we can write 0 and it will work now as you can see here we have this red line and that is because we have not imported the scene management so on the top we need to write using unity engine dot scene management so now that we have written this now whenever the ball will fall down it will reset the level so now that we have the script written let's go ahead and save this and go back to unity alright so here we are back inside unity let's go ahead and play but before that let's select our soccer ball and give a speed to our move speed variable so that our ball can move so for the start let's give it a speed of 10 or 15 I say let's say 10 and let's click on play and see how it's working so 10 speed click here 
Now as you can see I can make my ball move left and right up and down like this and I can move my ball forward or backward but not on the up and down axis only left and right and front and back and now whenever I fall down let's see what happens whenever I fall down automatically the ball restarts because the level gets reloaded so whenever I fall down automatically the level gets reloaded and the game gets restarted so we have created the very basic of this now what we need to do is we need to set the camera make the camera follow the ball and then create a small level so that we can play it okay so now let's go ahead and make the camera and adjust the camera so that we can follow the ball so I'm gonna select my main camera and as you can see here we have our main camera if we retreat our view here we have our main camera and this is the game view the thing that you can see on the bottom is our game view so whatever you are seeing here this is the this is what we can see in our game this is not this is the scene view where we can edit it but this is the thing that we can use that you can see in our game so from that first of all let's select this free aspect and choose 1920 by 1080 or full HD resolution so that our game gets into full resolution okay so now this is the resolution that you're gonna use for our game once you have done that now let's adjust the camera a little bit let's select the main camera move it to the front something like this somewhere like this and then we can make it a little bit upwards something like this and then we can go to this rotation and change the X rotation of the camera to let's say 20 or something like that so once we have done that I think this should be okay for our game I think this should be okay for our game so now that we have it now we need to make our camera follow our ball always so that wherever it goes our camera always follows the ball so inside our scripts folder we're gonna go ahead and create a new C sharp script and we're gonna name this one camera follow now I'm gonna select my main camera and and drag and drop the camera follow script right here now let's double click to open the camera follow script in Visual Studio and let's start writing our code so the first thing we need is we need a target which we can follow so for that here we're gonna create a public variable public transform target and then inside start we will actually calculate the difference between our balls position and our camera's position and we will keep that position or keep that difference always same so that our camera keeps following the ball always for that here we're going to create a new variable called vector 3 offset so this will be the difference or the distance between our target and our camera in our start we're going to say offset equals target dot position minus transform dot position so this offset is the distance between our targets position and our cameras position and then inside our fixed update what you're gonna do is we're gonna make the camera always follow the ball at this offset or the camera should be always at this distance from our player for that here we're gonna write transform dot position equals target dot position minus offset so that always the camera will be at this distance from our target or our player so the camera will always keep following the ball so now that we have this let's go back to unity and now let's select our main camera here as you can see it is waiting for the target so in the target we're gonna drag and drop our soccer ball or our player whatever you have right here so now that we have this let's go ahead and click on play and see how this is working so now as you can see whenever the ball moves automatically the camera moves along with it as well so whenever the ball moves left and right front and back the camera automatically moves along with it so our camera follow code is working all right so now that we have our camera follow code working now we need to make the level a little bit bigger and create some coins so that the player can actually collect the coins all right so for that first of all let's go ahead and make the level a little bit bigger so as you can see here we have our first ground I'm gonna go ahead and right click and duplicate to create a new ground now I can simply go to this move tool and move it somewhere like this now as you can see it's not easy to actually connect both of them together because they might overlap here so what we can do is we can press the V key on our keyboard to snap from one vertex to another vertex very easily 
So press the V key, select this vertex and drag it to snap to this vertex like this. So now as you can see both of these levels have been snapped very easily. Now I'm going to select this ground and duplicate it one more time. Then I'm going to move it here and then I'm going to snap it here as well. So I'm going to press the V key, snap it like this and then for this level I'm going to change the X scale to 20 and change the Z scale to 5. So something like this. Alright. So something like this and then I'm going to put it somewhere like this and if you want to make it a little more precise then what you can do is you can simply press the V key again and snap these two portions. You can rotate your view completely and then press the V key here and snap these two portions like this. So this way you can do that. Also you can change your view by pressing the Y and go to the top view. You can press the X and go to the front view and this way you can easily adjust it. And then again press the Alt click, press the Alt button and then rotate your mouse wheel to go to any other view that you want to. Alright, so now that we have created this one, let's create a few more things here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this platform. Duplicate this, move it like this, press the V key and change it to this. Then again from here we're gonna duplicate the ground, move it forward and then we're gonna set the X to 5 and Y to 20, something like this. And then again from here we're gonna duplicate this platform now. Duplicate this one, move it to the front like this and this and this and then we can press the V key and snap it like this and this can be the end position or the end point of our level all right so now that we have our level our ball can actually move to all these levels and then we can actually make the game more interesting now what you can do is i can select the main camera and make the skybox look a little better so as you can see we have the clear flags set to skybox i can go ahead and change it to solid color and then change it to a color that i want let's say a green like color something like this so this one I think looks pretty good so let's keep it like this you can go ahead and change it to any other color that you want to that's your wish so now that we have it let's go ahead and create some coins which you can collect and then we can win the game so for that here I'm gonna go ahead and create a new 3d object I'm gonna name this I'm gonna create a new cylinder so here we have a cylinder where is the cylinder let's go ahead and reset its position reset its position so here we have a cylinder now so here we have a cylinder now what you're gonna do is we can make it we can change the y scale to 0 0.5 or uh, not 0 0.5 even smaller than that because we're gonna make a coin from it so let's make it something like this I think this one looks pretty good so now that we have the coin let's go ahead and give it a material so go to the materials folder right click create a new material I'm gonna name this one coin then change its color to something like gold a golden color now I'm gonna drag and drop the coin material over our coin then I'm gonna select the coin material change its metallic value something like this and drag and drop the smoothness to make it look a little more like a coin alright so now it looks like a golden coin <laughs> and then you can also select the cylinder and change its X and Z scale as well let's make it 0 0.5 0 0.5 or I think let's make it 1 it will be easier for the player to actually collect the coins then now as you can see the coin looks like this so we need to rotate it to make it look like actual coin for that we're gonna go and change its X rotation to 90 and now it looks like a coin let's see how big it is it's actually pretty big compared to our ball so if you want you can also make it smaller let's go ahead and change its X scale to 0 0.5 Z scale to 0 0.5 as well and let's bring it down to this point in our ground so now that we have this coin we're gonna go ahead and create a new empty game object we're gonna name this one coin Let's reset its position and then drag and drop our cylinder over this coin to make this cylinder a child of this coin. Now 
we're gonna re reset its position to make it a child of this coin so now we can select the coin game object and move it anywhere and then we can rotate it like this okay so now what you're gonna do is we're gonna make this coin a prefab object before that we're gonna go to this tag go to add tag and create a new tag and I'm gonna name this one coin then I'm gonna select the coin and select the coin tag from it okay so now I'm gonna go to the assets folder create a new folder I'm gonna name this one prefab the prefabs are objects which you can reuse again and again in this case we're gonna reuse the coins again and again so that is why I'm drag and dropping it I'm dragging and dropping it inside the prefabs folder and making a prefab out of it now I can select the coin make it position something like somewhere like this now it looks pretty good now let's go to our scripts folder create a new C sharp script and I'm gonna name this one coin now let's select our coin drag and drop the coin script over here and then double click to open it now the coin script is going to be very very simple we only need a few things first of all here we need a rotate speed so public float rotate speed so this is the speed by which the coin is going to rotate now inside the fixed update fixed update we're gonna write transform dot rotate and this is going to rotate our coin and we're going to rotate our coin around the y axis so we're gonna write 0 for x for y we're gonna write rotate speed and for the z we're gonna write 0 now depending on the rotation of your coin you might need to change this you might need to keep it in the y uh, keep it in the Z or keep it in the X because your coin might be rotated differently compared to mine depending on how you have set your game but you have, if you have set the game exactly as I have done then this is going to work for it, fine so now the coin is going to rotate around Y and I'm gonna go back to unity select the coin let's make the rotate speed to about 5 and let's play to see how this is working so let's play alright so the coin is rotating I can make it a little bit down or let's keep it at this point now go inside the prefab folder select the coin inside the prefab and make sure you have attached the script to the prefab and not to this game object okay so what you can do is we can either attach it to this prefab separately or we can select our coin go to this overrides and click on apply all now as you can see our prefab also has this coin script attached okay so now that we have it one thing what you can do is as you can see our coin game object also has this cylinder or this capsule collider attached we're gonna go ahead and change it to a trigger okay so change it to a trigger because if it is set to a collider then what will happen is our ball will collide with it but if it is set as a trigger then our ball can go through it so it can detect collisions but it can still go through it and it will give a better behavior here now select our cylinder and make sure you have attached this coin tag to it because this is where we have the collider attached and this is why we want to add the coin tag to this collider or this cylinder inside the coin okay so once you have done that once you have done that as you can see now if I double click here our cylinder has this coin tag attached so now I can simply drag and drop and use the coins and create a cool new level so now let's go ahead and drag this coin here and as you can see here we have a coin let's move it somewhere like this something like this somewhere like this move it to a position where our ball can at least collect it fine then I'm gonna duplicate it and position it somewhere like this I think this will be a good position then I'm gonna duplicate it duplicate this coin and position it somewhere like this then I'm gonna duplicate it again position it somewhere like here at the edge and then again I'm gonna duplicate it position it at the edge right here so now one two three four five six we have six coins let's give it another one let's duplicate it and position it right about here 
So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven coins. And whenever the player collects all the seven coins, we want to make the player win the game. So let's go ahead and program that in our player controller. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder and open up my player controller script. And now inside the update, not inside the update, here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function. We're going to call it void on trigger enter. This function gets called whenever our ball collides with another object which has a collider and the trigger turned on. Okay. And now we have all the information related to the trigger inside this other folder. So here we're going to write other dot tag equals coin. So if our player is colliding with a game object which has a coin tag attached, so we're going to write if inside if we're going to write this condition. So if we are colliding with an object which has the coin tag attached, then we're going to increment the score. In this case, we are not showing the score. So here we're going to simply create a new int score variable or int coins variable coins collected variable and then we're going to say coins collected plus plus so every time it collects a coin it will check it and we'll say coins collected plus plus and whenever the value of coins whenever the coins collected is greater than equals seven that means we have collected all the coins we're going to win the game now currently we don't have anything to show in the game so what you're going to do is we're going to create a new text object which will show up on the screen whenever we win the game so for now let's go ahead and save this and see if it is working in our game so now let's go ahead and play and as you can see whenever the player actually goes through the coins it can actually collect the coins can it collect Okay, so the player might be able to collect the coins, but the coins are not actually deactivating from the scene. So let's go to our player controller. And whenever this happens, after saying this, we're going to also say other dot game object dot set active to false. Because the coins were not deactivating from the scene even after we are collecting them. So now let's save this, go back to Unity. Now let's click on play. Now you will see whenever we go through the coins, the coin gets deactivated because we have already collected it. So this way we can actually collect all the coins just like this. And if we fall down, the game will get restarted. Okay. So things are working pretty fine. Now, whenever the player wins the game, we want to show a win text on the screen. So let's see how we can do that. For that, here we're going to go ahead and go to UI and create a new text mesh pro object. Now, if you want, you can also use the old text objects which is easy to set up and easy to do. But if you want more features, you can use this text mesh pro and you need to use the import the TMP essentials for that. So as you can see, I have imported them. And here we have our text object. If you want to use the old text objects and make it simple, you can go to this UI, go to this legacy and use text from here. Okay. So here we have our text. Let's go ahead and reset its position to the center somewhere like this. And now I'm going to change this to level cleared something like this now let's select the text go to this rect tool and make it bigger so that we have more area to write whatever we want to all right and if you want you can go to this 2d mode to for easy editing and whenever you are done you can go back from this 2d mode so in this 2d mode it's easy to actually edit the UI elements. So let's make it bigger, something like this. Let's make it center on the vertical and on the horizontal axis as well. So here we have the level cleared. Let's make the font bigger, something like, let's say 200 or 300. Uh, I think make it, let's make it 200. It's going to be better. So here we have our level clear text. Now what you can do is you, if you want, you can use any other font or if you have this font, you can use this font as well. If you have any other fonts, you can use that as well. So let's rename it to win text. All right. So here we have the win text objects. So in my case, here I have a font imported. So here we have this font. What I can do is I can use this font in this case. So I'm going to go to this font, right click 
and go to create and I'm gonna go to this go to this text mesh pro and click on font asset so now as you can see it has created a new font asset for us which we can use with this text so I can go to my win text select my font asset and click here and select the font that I want to use here okay let's make it a little bit bigger so now I have this thing here which I want to appear whenever the level reloads or whenever the level gets cleared I can go ahead and change its color a little bit something like this you can want you can do this if you want to or you can simply ignore this if you don't wanna do this also you can select an outline I can give it an outline a little bit darker color with a little bit darker color something like this let's change the thickness something like this this is completely optional if you want if you prefer to do something like this you can do that if you don't want to do that simply go ahead and ignore this and do other things in your game so I think this one looks pretty good so whenever the level actually gets cleared or whenever the player wins I want this text to be appeared on the screen okay so by default I'm gonna go ahead and actually deactivate it now let's go ahead and open up our player controller one more time player controller script and here we need a reference to this win text object so here we're gonna say public game object win text and whenever the player wins the game, whenever the collected coins is greater than seven, we're gonna say win text dot set active to true. All right. So whenever the player wins, he has collected all the coins. We're gonna set the win text to true, and then the player will win. So let's save this. Go back to Unity finally, and now I'm gonna select my soccer ball go to the player controller and it is waiting for the win text so drag and drop the win text game object right here and now we have everything ready and let's play the game and see if we can win or not so from here you can simply make it maximized for a better view let's play and see if we can win so here we have the ball let's go ahead and collect the first coin let's go ahead and collect the second coin let's go and collect the third coin and be aware if we don't fall down and here is the third coin let's go here and collect the other coins as well where are the other coins I have no idea <laughs> let's go and find them so here we have another coin so probably three coins or four coins I have already got here I have another coin let's go ahead and collect it okay so I think we have only one left let's see how many we have left I guess we have only one or two left let's see and make sure you don't fall down here so here we have another one and we have another one at the end so let's go ahead and actually collect the final one and win the game okay so let's go ahead and find and collect this one and can I collect it okay so whenever we have collected all the coins as you can see level cleared is shown on our screen so we have won the game finally after building it all right so this way we have built the complete game I hope you really enjoyed and learned a lot of new things you can go to file build settings and make sure you have added the open scenes so that you can reload the scenes and then you can actually build them if you want to build the scene you can simply click on build to build it for Windows Mac and Linux if you want to build for WebGL you can select the WebGL click on switch platform and build and run to build it for WebGL and run it on the web so this way you have learned how to build a completely working game in unity in within this short time I have tried to explain all the things but some of the things might be confusing because I was going very fast here so this is Raja from Charger Games. I hope you really enjoyed and liked this video. And if you want to make some more cool games like 3D Endless Runners, 2D Endless Runners, 2D Catching Game, 2D Runner Game, Racing Game and all that, I have a lot of different courses where you can learn to build all these games from these courses for your mobile devices, for your PC and all that. You can get all my courses from the links in the description of this video and from the pinned comments. So go ahead and enroll in the courses and learn how to build some more cool games. So thanks for watching. This is Raja from Charger Games and I'm going to see you in another video very soon. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more cool tutorials. And I'm going to see you in another video very soon.